Part 6. Union Territories and Special Areas. 40 Union Territories. 41 Scheduled and Tribal. 40 Union Territories. Under Article 1 of the Constitution, the Territory of India comprises three categories of territories, a. Territories of the States, b. Union Territories, and c. Territories that may be acquired by the Government of India at any time. At present, there are 29 states, 7 Union Territories and no acquired territories. The states are the members of the federal system in India and share a distribution of power with the centre. The Union Territories, on the other hand, are those areas which are under the direct control and administration of the central government. Hence, they are also known as centrally administered territories. In this way, existence of these territories constitutes a conspicuous departure from federalism in India, the government of India is plainly unitary in so far as the relationship between New Delhi and these central enclaves is concerned. 1. Creation of Union Territories During the British rule, certain areas were constituted as scheduled districts in 1874. Later, they came to be known as Chief Commissioner's Provinces. After independence, they were placed in the category of Part C states and Part D territories too. In 1956, they were constituted as the Union Territories by the Seventh Constitutional Amendment Act, 1956, and the States Reorganization Act, 1956. Gradually, some of these Union Territories have been elevated to statehood. Thus, Himachal Pradesh, Manipur, Tripura, Mizoram, Arunachal Pradesh and Goa, which are states today were formerly Union Territories. On the other hand, the territories that were acquired from the Portuguese, Goa, Daman and Diu, and Dadra and Nagar Havli, and the French, Puducherry, were constituted as the Union Territories. At present, there are nine Union Territories. They are, along with the year of creation, 1, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, 1956, 2, Delhi, 1956, 3, Lakshadweep, 1956, 4, Dadra and Nagar Havli, 1961, 5, Daman and Diu, 1962, 6, Puducherry, 1962, 7, Chandigarh, 1966, 8, Jammu and Kashmir, 2019 and, 9, Ladakh, 2019. Till 1973, Lakshadweep was known by the name of Lakadiv, Minikoy, and Amandivi Islands. In 1992, Delhi was redesignated as the National Capital Territory of Delhi. Till 2006, Puducherry was known as Pondicherry. The Union territories have been created for a variety of reasons. These are mentioned below three. One political and administrative consideration, Delhi and Chandigarh. Two cultural distinctiveness, Puducherry, Dadra and Nagar Havli, and Daman and Diu. Three strategic importance, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep. Four special treatment and care of the backward and tribal people, Mizoram, Manipur, Tripura and Arunachal Pradesh which later became states. In 2019, the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir was bifurcated into two separate Union territories, namely, the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, and the Union Territory of Ladakh. While introducing the Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Bill, 2019, in the Parliament, the central government gave the following reasons for the creation of these two new Union Territories. 1. The Ladakh Division of the State of Jammu and Kashmir has a large area but is sparsely populated with a very difficult terrain. There has been a long pending demand of people of Ladakh, to give it the status of a Union Territory to enable them to realize their aspirations. The Union Territory of Ladakh will be without a legislature. 2. Further, keeping in view the prevailing internal security situation, fueled by cross-border terrorism in the existing state of Jammu and Kashmir, a separate Union Territory for Jammu and Kashmir is being created. The Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir will be with the legislature. 
Administration of Union Territories. Articles 239 to 241 in Part 8 of the Constitution deal with the Union Territories. Even though all the Union Territories belong to one category, there is no uniformity in their administrative system. Every Union Territory is administered by the President acting through an administrator appointed by him. An administrator of a Union Territory is an agent of the President and not head of state like a governor. The President can specify the designation of an administrator, it may be Lieutenant Governor or Chief Commissioner or Administrator. At present, it is Lieutenant Governor in the case of Delhi, Puducherry, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh and Administrator in the case of Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Havli, Daman and Diu and Lakshadweep. The President can also appoint the Governor of a state as the Administrator of an adjoining Union territory. In that capacity, the Governor is to act independently of his Council of Ministers. The Union Territories of Puducherry, in 1963, Delhi, in 1992, and Jammu and Kashmir, in 2019, are provided with a Legislative Assembly for and a Council of Ministers headed by a Chief Minister. The remaining six Union Territories do not have such popular political institutions. But, the establishment of such institutions in the Union Territories does not diminish the supreme control of the President and Parliament over them. The Parliament can make laws on any subject of the three lists, including the State List, for the Union Territories. This power of Parliament also extends to Puducherry, Delhi, and Jammu and Kashmir, which have their own local legislatures. This means that, the legislative power of Parliament for the Union Territories on subjects of the state list remain unaffected even after establishing a local legislature for them. But, the Legislative Assembly of Puducherry can also make laws on any subject of the state list and the concurrent list. Similarly, the Legislative Assembly of Delhi can make laws on any subject of the state list, except public order, police, and land, and the concurrent list. Likewise, the Legislative Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir can make laws on any subject of the state list, except public order and police, and the concurrent list. The President can make regulations for the peace, progress, and good government of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Dadra and Nagar Havli, Daman, and Diu and Ladakh. In the case of Puducherry also, the President can legislate by making regulations but only when the Assembly is suspended or dissolved. A regulation made by the President has the same force and effect as an Act of Parliament and can also repeal or amend any Act of Parliament in relation to these Union Territories. The Parliament can establish a High Court for a Union Territory or put it under the jurisdiction of the High Court of adjacent state. Delhi is the only Union Territory that has a High Court of its own, since 1966. The Bombay High Court has got jurisdiction over two Union Territories, Dadra and Nagar Havli, and Daman, and Diu. Andaman and Nokabar Islands, Chandigarh, Lakshadweep, and Puducherry are placed under the Calcutta, Punjab and Haryana, Kerala, and Madras High Courts respectively. The Jammu and Kashmir High Court is the common High Court for the two Union territories of Jammu and Kashmir, and Ladakh. The Constitution does not contain any separate provisions for the administration of acquired territories. But, the constitutional provisions for the administration of Union Territories also apply to the acquired territories. Special Provisions for Delhi The 69th Constitutional Amendment Act of 19915 provided a special status to the Union Territory of Delhi, and redesignated it the National Capital Territory of Delhi and designated the Administrator of Delhi as the Lieutenant, LT, Governor. It created a Legislative Assembly and a Council of Ministers for Delhi. Previously, Delhi had a Metropolitan Council and an Executive Council. The strength of the Assembly is fixed at 70 members, directly elected by the people. The elections are conducted by the Election Commission of India. The Assembly can make laws on all the matters of the state list and the concurrent list except the three matters of the state list, that is, public order, police and land. But, the laws of Parliament prevail over those made by the Assembly. 
the strength of the Council of Ministers is fixed at 10% of the total strength of the Assembly, that is, 7, one Chief Minister and six other Ministers. The Chief Minister is appointed by the President, not by the LT Governor. The other Ministers are appointed by the President on the advice of the Chief Minister. The Ministers hold office during the pleasure of the President. The Council of Ministers is collectively responsible to the Assembly. The Council of Ministers headed by the Chief Minister aid and advise the LT Governor in the exercise of his functions except in so far as he is required to act in his discretion. In the case of difference of opinion between the LT Governor and his Ministers, the LT Governor is to refer the matter to the President for decision and act accordingly. When a situation arises in which the administration of the territory cannot be carried on in accordance with the above provisions, the President can suspend their, above provisions, operation and make the necessary incidental or consequential provisions for administering the territory. In brief, in case of failure of constitutional machinery, the President can impose his rule in the territory. This can be done on the report of the LT Governor or otherwise. This provision resembles Article 356 which deals with the imposition of President's rule in the states. The LT Governor is empowered to promulgate ordinances during recess of the Assembly. An ordinance has the same force as an act of the Assembly. Every such ordinance must be approved by the Assembly within six weeks from its reassembly. He can also withdraw an ordinance at any time. But, he cannot promulgate an ordinance when the Assembly is dissolved or suspended. Further, no such ordinance can be promulgated or withdrawn without the prior permission of the President. Advisory Committees of Union Territories Under the Government of India, Allocation of Business, Rules 1961, Ministry of Home Affairs is the nodal ministry for all matters of Union Territories relating to legislation, finance and budget, services and appointment of lieutenant governors and administrators. All the six Uts without legislature, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Chandigarh, Daman and Diu, Dadra and Nagar Havli, Lakshadweep and Ladakh, have the Forum of Home Ministers Advisory Committee, HMAC, slash Administrators Advisory Committee, AAC. While HMAC is chaired by the Union Home Minister, AAC is chaired by the Administrator of the Concerned Uts. The Member of Parliament and elected members from the local bodies e.g. District Panchayats and Municipal Council of the respective Uts are members of these committees among others. The committee discusses the general issues relating to social and economic development of the Uts.6. Table 40.1 Administrative System of Union Territories at a Glance Union Territories Executive Legislature Judiciary 1. Andaman and Nicobar Islands Lieutenant Governor Under Calcutta High Court 2. Chandigarh Administrator Under Punjab and Haryana High Court 3. Dadra and Nagar Havli Administrator Under Bombay High Court 4. Daman and Diu Administrator Under Bombay High Court 5. Delhi A. Lieutenant Governor B. Chief Minister C. Council of Ministers Legislative Assembly Separate High Court 6. Lakshadweep Administrator Under Kerala High Court 7. Puducherry A. Lieutenant Governor B. Chief Minister C. Council of Ministers Legislative Assembly Under Madras High Court 8. Jammu and Kashmir A. Lieutenant Governor B. Chief Minister C. Council of Ministers Legislative Assembly under Jammu and Kashmir High Court. 9. Ladakh. Lieutenant Governor. Under Jammu and Kashmir High Court. Note, the Governor of Punjab is concurrently the Administrator of Chandigarh. The Administrator of Dadra and Nagar Havli is concurrently the Administrator of Daman and Diu. Lakshadweep has a separate Administrator 7. 
Table 40.2 Comparing States and Union Territories States Union Territories 1. Their relationship with center is federal. 1. Their relationship with center is unitary. 2. They share a distribution of power with the center. 2. They are under the direct control and administration of the center. 3. They have autonomy. 3. They do not have any autonomy. 4. There is uniformity in their administrative setup. 4. There is no uniformity in their administrative setup. 5. Their executive head is known as governor. 5. Their executive head is known by various designations, administrator or lieutenant governor or chief commissioner. 6. A governor is a constitutional head of the state. 6. An administrator is an agent of the president. 7. Parliament cannot make laws on the subjects of the state list in relation to the states except under extraordinary circumstances. 7. Parliament can make laws on any subject of the three lists the state list in relation to the states except under in relation to the Union Territories. Table 40.3 Articles Related to Union Territories at a Glance Article No. Subject Matter 239 Administration of Union Territories 239A Creation of local legislatures or council of ministers or both for certain union territories. 239A. Special provisions with respect to Delhi. 239 AB. Provision in case of failure of constitutional machinery. 239B. Power of administrator to promulgate ordinances during recess of legislature. 240. Power of President to make regulations for certain Union territories. 241. High Courts for Union territories. 242. Co-org, repealed. Notes and References. 1. S. R. Maheshwari, State Governments in India, Macmillan, 2000 edition, p. 131. 2. In 1950, the Constitution contained a fourfold classification of the states and territories of the Indian Union, Part A, Part B and Part C states and Part D territories. 3. J. C. Yohari, Indian Government and Politics, Vishal, Volume 2, 13th edition, 2001, p. 499. 4. The Assembly of Puducherry consists of 30 members while that of Delhi 70 members and that of Jammu and Kashmir 83 members. 5. With effect from February 1, 1992. 6. Annual Report 2018-19, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India, P70. 7. India 2019, a reference annual, Publications Division, Government of India, P47. 41 Scheduled and Tribal Areas Article 244 in Part X of the Constitution envisages a special system of administration for certain areas designated as Scheduled Areas and Tribal Areas. The fifth schedule of the Constitution deals with the administration and control of Scheduled Areas and Scheduled Tribes in any state except the four states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram 1. The sixth schedule of the Constitution, on the other hand, deals with the administration of the tribal areas in the four northeastern states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. Administration of Scheduled Areas The scheduled areas are treated differently from the other areas in the country because they are inhabited by aboriginals who are socially and economically rather backward, and special efforts need to be made to improve their condition. Therefore, the whole of the normal administrative machinery operating in a state is not extended to the scheduled areas and the central government has somewhat greater responsibility for these areas too. The various features of administration contained in the fifth schedule are as follows. 1. Declaration of scheduled areas, the president is empowered to declare an area to be a scheduled area. He can also increase or decrease its area, alter its boundary lines, rescind such designation or make fresh orders for such redesignation on an area in consultation with the governor of the state concerned. 
2. Executive power of state and center, the executive power of a state extends to the scheduled areas therein. But the governor has a special responsibility regarding such areas. He has to submit a report to the president regarding the administration of such areas, annually or whenever so required by the president. The executive power of the center extends to giving directions to the states regarding the administration of such areas. 3. Tribes Advisory Council Each state having scheduled areas has to establish a tribes advisory council to advise on welfare and advancement of the scheduled tribes. It is to consist of 20 members, three-fourths of whom are to be the representatives of the scheduled tribes in the state legislative assembly. A similar council can also be established in a state having scheduled tribes but not scheduled areas therein, if the president so directs. For law applicable to scheduled areas, the governor is empowered to direct that any particular act of parliament or the state legislature does not apply to a scheduled area or apply with specified modifications and exceptions. He can also make regulations for the peace and good government of a scheduled area after consulting the tribe's advisory council. Such regulations may prohibit or restrict the transfer of land by or among members of the scheduled tribes, regulate the allotment of land to members of the scheduled tribes and regulate the business of money lending in relation to the scheduled tribes. Also, a regulation may repeal or amend any act of parliament or the state legislature, which is applicable to a scheduled area. But, all such regulations require the assent of the president. The Constitution requires the President to appoint a commission to report on the administration of the scheduled areas and the welfare of the scheduled tribes in the states. He can appoint such a commission at any time but compulsorily after ten years of the commencement of the Constitution. Hence, a commission was appointed in 1960. It was headed by UND Bar and submitted its report in 1961. After four decades, the second commission was appointed in 2002 under the chairmanship of Dilip Singhuriya. It submitted its report in 2004. Administration of Tribal Areas The Constitution, under 6th Schedule, contains special provisions for the administration of tribal areas in the four northeastern states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. The rationality behind the special arrangements in respect of only these four states lies in the following. The tribes in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram have not assimilated much the life and ways of the other people in these states. These areas have hitherto been anthropological specimens. The tribal people in other parts of India have more or less adopted the culture of the majority of the people in whose midst they live. The tribes in Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram on the other hand, still have their roots in their own culture, customs, and civilization. These areas are, therefore, treated differently by the constitution and sizable amount of autonomy has been given to these people for self-government. Point 3. The various features of administration contained in the sixth schedule are as follows. 1. The tribal areas in the four states of Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram have been constituted as autonomous districts for but, they do not fall outside the executive authority of the state concerned. 2. The governor is empowered to organize and reorganize the autonomous districts. Thus, he can increase or decrease their areas or change their names or define their boundaries and so on. 3. If there are different tribes in an autonomous district, the governor can divide the district into several autonomous regions. For each autonomous district has a district council consisting of 30 members, of whom 4 are nominated by the governor and the remaining 26 are elected on the basis of adult franchise. The elected members hold office for a term of 5 years, unless the council is dissolved earlier, and nominated members hold office during the pleasure of the governor. Each autonomous region also has a separate regional council. 5. The district and regional councils administer the areas under their jurisdiction. They can make laws on certain specified matters like land, forests, canal water, shifting cultivation, village administration, inheritance of property, marriage and divorce, social customs and so on. But all such laws require the assent of the governor. 
6. The district and regional councils within their territorial jurisdictions can constitute village councils or courts for trial of suits and cases between the tribes. They hear appeals from them. The jurisdiction of high court over these suits and cases is specified by the governor. 7. The district council can establish, construct, or manage primary schools, dispensaries, markets, ferries, fisheries, roads and so on in the district. It can also make regulations for the control of money lending and trading by non-tribals. But, such regulations require the assent of the governor. 8. The district and regional councils are empowered to assess and collect land revenue and to impose certain specified taxes. 9. The Acts of Parliament or the state legislature do not apply to autonomous districts and autonomous regions or apply with specified modifications and exceptions. 5. 10. The Governor can appoint a commission to examine and report on any matter relating to the administration of the autonomous districts or regions. He may dissolve a district or regional council on the recommendation of the commission. Table 41.1 Tribal Areas at a Glance, 2019 States. Tribal areas. 1. Assam. 1. The North Kuchar Hills District. 2. The Karbayanglong District. 3. The Bodo Land Territorial Areas District. 2. Meghalaya. 1. Kasai Hills District. 2. Jaintia Hills District. 3. The Garo Hills District. 3. Tripura. Tripura Tribal Areas District. 4. Mizoram. 1. The Chukma District. 2. The Mara District. 3. The Lai District. Table 41.2 Articles Related to Scheduled and Tribal Areas at a Glance. Article No. Subject Matter. 244. Administration of Scheduled Areas and Tribal Areas. 244A. Formation of an autonomous state comprising certain tribal areas in Assam and creation of local legislature or council of ministers or both therefore. 339. Control of the union over the administration of scheduled areas and the welfare of scheduled tribes. Table 41.3 Parliamentary Laws Related to the Fifth and Sixth Schedules of the Constitution. SL No. Acts. Provisions. 1. Lushai Hills District, Change of Name, Act, 1954. Renamed the Lushai Hills District as the Mizo District. The Lushai Hills District was one of the six autonomous districts in the tribal areas of Assam specified in the sixth schedule of the Constitution. 2. Government of Union Territories, Amendment, Act, 1971. Amended the sixth schedule of the Constitution to include certain provisions with respect to the autonomous districts and autonomous regions of the Union Territory of Mizoram. 3. Repealing and Amending Act, 1974. Repealed certain enactments and amended certain other enactments. It also substituted the words cattle pounds for cattle ponds in the sixth schedule of the Constitution. 4. Fifth schedule to the Constitution, Amendment, Act, 1976. Empowered the President of India, I, to increase the area of any scheduled area in a state after consultation with the Governor of that state, and, 2. To rescind any order made for the designation of an area in any state to be a scheduled area, or in consultation with the governor of the state concerned, make fresh order redefining the area which is to be a scheduled area. 5. Sixth Schedule to the Constitution, Amendment, Act, 1988. Included certain modifications in the Sixth Schedule of the Constitution in its application to the states of Tripura and Mizoram. These, I, provided that the governors shall act in their discretion in the discharge of some of their functions, too, made provisions relating to the application of Acts of Parliament and the state legislatures to autonomous districts and autonomous regions, and, 3, provided for a time limit in making over the share of royalties to the district councils. 6. Sixth Schedule to the Constitution, 
Amendment, Act, 1995. Included certain modifications in the sixth schedule of the Constitution in its application to the state of Assam. These, I, provided that the district council constituted for the North Kuchar Hills district shall be called as the North Kuchar Hills Autonomous Council and the district council constituted for the Karbianglong district shall be called as the Karbianglong Autonomous Council, too made provisions for the additional powers of the North Kuchar Hills Autonomous Council and the Karbianglong Autonomous Council to make laws, and, three, made it mandatory for the governor to consult the North Kuchar Hills Autonomous Council or the Karbianglong Autonomous Council, as the case may be, in the exercise of his discretionary powers. 7. Sixth Schedule to the Constitution, Amendment, Act, 2003 included certain modifications in the sixth schedule of the Constitution in its application to the state of Assam. This was done to meet the aspirations of the Bodos in Assam and in pursuance of the Memorandum of Settlement signed between the Central Government, the Government of Assam and Bodo Liberation Tigers, BLT, on 10.02-2003 for a durable solution to the Bodo issues. In this context, the Act made the following provisions, I specified the Bodo Land Territorial Areas District in the list of the tribal areas of the state of Assam, 2, created an autonomous self-governing body known as the Bodo Land Territorial Council, BTC, within the state of Assam, 3, vested the council with legislative, administrative and financial powers in respect of specified subjects, and, 4, provided for adequate safeguards for the non-tribals in the BTC area. Notes and references. 1. At present, 2019, 10 states of India have scheduled areas. These are, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Odisha, and Rajasthan. 2. M.P. Jain, Indian Constitutional Law, Vadva, 4th edition, 1987, p. 236. 3 Ibid, p. 237. 4 Presently, 2019, there are a total of 10 tribal areas. See Table 41.1. 5 The power of direction, in this regard, lies either with the President or Governor. Thus, in the case of Assam, it lies with the Governor, both in respect of Acts of Parliament or State Legislature. In the case of Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram, it lies with the President in respect of Acts of Parliament and Governor in respect of Acts of State Legislature.